out the map. And that's why they lost uh, against uh, a very solid looking alliance who already moved on into the semifinals today. In the meantime, I think we should check a look. There we are uh, getting set to uh, get started in about two or three minutes time. I think we should take a look at the. Uh, oh no, we're already for starting. Tomorrow. Actually. Oh, it's already starting now. Okay, so yeah. I guess we will take a little bit of a look at the planning from tomorrow a little bit later on, and so we will be moving on to the picks and bands. First band will be coming onto the side of Big by Granati, and it is going to be Twisted as the first band. Yeah, Twisted and Dive being the band. So Dive. And that's also what I remember when um, Airwalkers, now Team Wild, played against Big. They didn't pick Dive even though it was open because they don't know how the pace from Granadi and Mass is on this map. And uh, well, we see the first pick being Edge, one of the most played maps in there. And then, um, yeah, Twisted is the ban, so the overlay is wrong in that way again. So don't be deceived by that. So it is uh, Edge and being G the Force. first map and G Force. Yeah, just to quickly uh, touch down on that, just to summarize it, unfortunately, uh, just to summarize it for Big and for many of the teams, it's more of like of a safe ban to make sure that they do not live themselves for any kind of uh, any kind of weird attack from the back from the teams that can leverage the advantage that they have on dive. In the meantime, G1 have picked Cosmos for map three. Backflip is being picked as map four by Big. Then onto the next map pick, the last map pick for G1, it will be Valley chosen as map five by Gwen. Yeah, so Valley not this time being picked by Big. I think they picked it every time when it was open. Um, also as a very comfortable first map. And then Tempest and Tubes again being the decider. decider. Oh my god, Tempest winning the coin flip against... Um, which... wait, let me check. Twisted Dive is banned. So it is Backflip, I think, not... Yeah, no, I, backflip I, I is also back, in there. I said Backflip in, uh, okay. back in uh, fourth map. As yeah. uh, we are now done with the picks and bands, we do have our map order settled. We'll be starting on Edge then. A pretty yep. good, uh, actually, a pretty good starter because it gives us a really good overview into uh, some of the more more advanced, well, maybe not mechanics, but some of the more advanced transitions that you might have to do in order to uh, might not only just perform at your best level in those kinds of maps, but also enjoy it at uh, at, uh, at an eating point. Really. Yeah, I mean, Edge is a very cool map. I really like that one. Also, Granadi. Um, when he played in like various streamer events, he just picked up the RPG style so well and was also able to win. If we, when we did a discovery event uh, at the beginning of the year, he was able to win against someone like Virtual, against someone like Spam in there. So that is something to consider. He's really good at the style, the wheel player who plays in Camera 3. But now we're going to see a different wheel uh, attribution being or, like, or being uh, kind of applied to his a wheel. Lot of, yeah. A lot of di uh, very, very different approach and a very, very different sense of engagement into the wheel with uh, the wheel essentially being uh, locked into 90 degrees of lock yeah. uh, from side to side. And uh, yeah, this is basically uh, going for a very, very, uh, very, very big sort of flicks of the arms as he gets the car inscribed into the corner. As we get started right here, right now, we go for the final time with the field loose and racing here on this game between G1 and and big. Let's see who takes it. It's Gamer's first, first pick. So keep that in mind. They are the blue team. The blue team is usually, or is always, the top seed, and they pick the map first. So there you go. So Ganadi and Massa not off to the best start, but we have seen an extensive amount of preparation that went in there. They arrived very early here, even though they play as late as now 20 CET. So uh, they have a lot of practice in, but of course you don't want to overcook yourself and just be completely um, in pressure and just maybe not be able to perform because you already used your, used your focus in the practice. Look at that. Binks and Gwen off to a very good start, finding themselves very comfortably in the lead. And uh, yeah, looking good for them so far. Looking very, very good for them indeed as uh, Binks. Oh, unfortunately, as soon as we said that, had a little bit of a low line that could have worked, but unfortunately, longitudinal speed was not enough to actually make it past that little chasm that uh, forced him to clip on the side of the block. Granati going for the side jump, going for the early ground contact is, is very risky around here. And it will be Gwen Binks top and bottom, thus will be enforcing a draw for G1 and Big. One apiece at the end of round one with a 0.458 as the round winning time. Also, Gwen on this map has all, like, the top three fastest times are all from Gwen. It's a 0 0.04, a 0.19, and a 0.20. Only Mime came closer today with a 0.25, actually. So that is a, a very good time that he has done there. So uh, he's looking very strong on this map. But also his teammate Binks is not looking too bad on this one, as he had to respawn this round. And now uh, Massa Granati can capitalize from that mistake. Gwen and Binks looked very strong in the first round, but now 
It looks like Massa and Granali can capitalize. That was a very, very subtle clip, actually, that uh, did Binks in on that round, which completely tanked his momentum, forcing him to respawn. Granali looking very, very much on the edge at the transition into the uh, ramp just before the reverse booster. And Gwen, unfortunately, landing with the plank at the side of the block. Thus, it will be promoting Granali and Massa up into first and second. And again, it seems as though it seems like re history is repeating itself yeah. in uh, this opening round with G1 looking solid individually, but they are just not in sync with each other other and that is just giving a big opportunity no pun intended to berlin international gaming to get the ace and take the lead four to one yeah the momentum already swings towards germany towards granadi and massa and the match continues where it's kind of stopped for gamers first yesterday because they were indeed doing a lot of mistakes and also on this particular map just throwing away an ace there in one of the rounds just getting one ace in that round against kc but eventually lost that match anyway, so that didn't matter. It was also 4-1, and also Big lost 4-1, but now they're ahead 4-1, actually quite uh, coincidentally in this way. But let's focus on this round. This is Gamer's first pick, Masa and Granadi looking strong. Masa with a good start here as well. Uh, Bing shopping very, very low there, but was able to get so much speed out of that, also going for the break tap there. And uh, look at that, Gwen now leading, but look at also Massa with a mistake. So Granadi has to at least get one point. Gwen on great pace. Massa clipping with the right hand side of the bridge, but also Bing Singwen basically trying to shave as much height as possible on that to jump transfer to the ramp a little bit uh, beforehand at the end of sector number one. Right now it's Gwen currently leading, but Granadi also putting himself in a really, really good position. Currently splitting the two G1 members apart. Is he going to be able to continue on that pace up until the end? Bing is looking very, very close and very racy up behind, but a little bit of a heavier landing on the side of the Frenchman will become. Compromising his exit a little bit, thus allowing Granati to at least salvage one point to go oh. into Big's bag. And Granati sending a point, uh, point three in there, or point four, and a point two forty two on the side of Gwen for the round winning time. Thus, G1 will be able to claw some of that gap back, but they need a little bit more. So the four top four times are now occupied by Gwen. The point twenty four just speeding the time by mine by one hundredth of a second. So Gwen being super fast on this map and also kind of consistent. Uh, I mean, setting this time four times is not an easy task to do. Obviously, he makes a mistake in that round. Thank you very much, Gwen, for that. Doesn't make the, <laughs> the speed check and he's out on that one. So uh, there you go. Also, big getting one point out of that round is already huge to deny that ace to them. So. Very good, and also a huge opportunity for Massa and Granai to extend their lead even further. Yeah, right now Binks looking to be a little bit on the back foot of the uh, entry into the bridge, but Massa has lost a lot of speed, making it through the bridge safely, and then through the penalty sent uphill coming up afterwards. So he will be slotting himself into second position just behind the wheelman himself. Granati currently still sitting in the lead by about half a tenth of a second, as we can see him working away at the wheel right there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, trying to get the proper setup for this particular uh, approach, but he's forced to respawn as he missed up the entry into the transfer of those promoting Binks into the lead and went up into third place even and that will be converting a victory for G1 the second consecutive victory actually for the uh, all French duo under competing under the Texan banner of course with G1 being based in Texas 0.494 for Binks at the end of this round in P1 P3 for Gwen and we're back to one point six to five Binks advantage having been completely almost eroded yeah, it shrunk uh, to only one point, so that is uh, still a elite, of course, heavily capitalizing on that ace in round number two, but uh, still getting that second position in, but now we see Massa with a mistake and hitting there, cannot make the speed check, so Granati is left alone and he should definitely deny an ace to gamers first. Oh, but Gwen clipping there, losing a bit of speed, but gets around that corner quite nicely, I, or like regardless, and it is Gwen and Spinks. Oh, making it, but Gwen with a mistake, so he's further behind. So Granadi has to play the safeguard. How well can he play the format by just saving, maybe even sacrificing P1? Binks coming away with that ramp jump a lot cleaner than I thought he would have because we all saw his car kind of uh, camber a little bit further up as he was uh, disappearing from our screen, from our perspective, but currently still sitting pretty in second position with Gwen in third to try and enforce the status quo and keep themselves in within touching distance in the score-wise. Massa forced to respawn once again, so really it's all down to Granadi to confirm that the draw will stand and it looks as though through the final two jumps we go he will be Clean. making that scenario happen and Ooh. Binks just having a little bit of a mishap there 0.264 from Granati this is a really solid time right there from the German as Massa will be looking very unlikely to cross the finish line with six seconds to spare and that means Big still hold on to the lead they go on to map point number one it is a theoretical possibility but right now they've, they've been able to catch one ace can they pull it off again that's the big question yeah, we have, yeah we, we have seen this map uh, 20, or like out of 28 times, it was either 
pig and banned 25 times and they were 45 uh, DNFs, so did not finish the round uh, throughout the um, middle stage of the World Championship and uh, the DNFs are just coming and coming, but big now with track points, that is a big round for them if they get uh, first and second position as uh, Massa and Granadi are right now in a close fight between Gwen and Binks, who got a really, really good uh, trajectory there. Oh, but Kanadi with a beautiful uh, line there over that uh, pipe there, or over the, yeah, like just yeah, balance. Yeah, the bridge, the bridge yeah, section. The bridge, the bridge. We, I call them girders, but really it's uh, those two together make yep. a really, really narrow bridge. That's barely the width of one car. We're separated by just a few pixels, so you have to get your placement absolutely right on there. As we make our way through this uh, transfer now, will be Gwen Granadi locked in battle for the first place with Binks in Hoppers in third place. We can get a three-way fight for the lead as Granadi tries to say, Eko, bye-bye, I just want to stick your head into the lead, and he makes it stick. Quite nicely, nice. I'll go up until the bitter end. Point three one five, and again, it is a draw that this time will put G1 into a map point series as well. But uh, Big having a bit more of a palatable situation again, just two points needed. Yeah, Granadi with very, I really want to emphasize his performance in the last two rounds. Granadi driving a point two and a point three, respectively, just denying that first position. That is huge now here for Berlin International Gaming. As we've seen a very early mistake from uh, Bings not being able to clear that section. Now Gwen has to pull the trigger and has to win this round in order to force a another round. If Granadi gets first and Massa gets third, for example, this map is over. Yeah, unfortunately, in this particular start, it went all full Blues Brothers on the side of G1 with Binks having a little bit of a uh, a bit of a mishap at the uh, double transfer, which is exceedingly yeah. deceptive uh, when you're not really feeling that first uh, that first particular section because those two sections are separated by just maybe one ramp, basically. And if you get one slight misalignment, you just end up clipping on one side and then it just compromises your entire run. In the meantime, Gwen tries to pull a bit of a gap oh. ahead. That was a very, very close landing there. He's on a there. great time, He's by on the a way. Really really great time as well. Could this be a point two, point one, or will we see a point zero on the side of the Frenchman? The alien is in the house. Point three eighty two. It was a lot. Uh, it was not quite as fast as we were expecting, but still there when it needs to be. But now this is the point of no return for G one. They need to get the ace if they want to take the map away from Big, or at the very least a victory if they want to go overtime in yeah. map one of this game. But again, Massa and Granadi were just playing the format. That's why the gap was so big. Bings failed the start. There's no reason to risk. There's no reason to mess that one up. And Big just takes that one point because they are in the lead. If they just do that again, they will win this map. Now we see a mistake, though, a small mistake from Granadi. Clipping there a little bit is quite a bit behind. So now Massa has to win this round. And if you take a look at his win rate, it's 14%. To, to win against someone like Gwen will be very hard. And Gwen and Bings are leading, so this could be a very unlucky outcome, but it is Bings with a mistake. So we could go into overtime for the first time today if Massa just gets that second place. Calm and collected. Bings is not too far behind, though. Only 0.30 of a second. Massa essentially has to rely and heavily relies upon G1's lack of consistency. Once again on display here, uh, which seems to uh, still kind of rears its ugly head compared to what it was on yesterday. As we can see on the bottom right, just completely full focus. Fast win right now. Full focus is fast second place, but it will be enough to guarantee the map win for Ooh, uh, wow. Big. Actually, not of the map win because oh, I got a little bit, uh, a little bit carried away. But yeah, indeed, a point eight on the side of Gwen, getting very, very close, less than four hundredths away from his own record. And uh, at the very least, we go into overtime. Then Three. so, okay, yeah, he finishes. Yeah, we uh, see uh, Granadi finishing indeed, and uh, yeah, overtime number one here, and uh, G1 having a chance to redeem itself, but they need to seize it now. Yeah, so Gwen now with another great time. Five fastest times being occupied by Gwen, the wonder child of Trackmania, but already now 19 years old, but he was on a high level just when he was 15. I just want to say, Launchpad, this map was just insane for him. And right now, also this map could be another dominant Gwen map if he wins the round together with Binks, if they get first and third. But also Granadi and Massa do not look that bad on this one. Oh, Binks with a very good start, finding himself in the lead. Massa going so close there to the inside, finding himself in the mix and Granadi promotes himself to first. Yeah, trying to carry a speed all the way through the bridge that we saw Massa try to go as he went all the way around the outside of the oh, bridge. Gwen oh, Gwen with a mistake. Yes. This is it for Br for Big. This is it for Big. They just have to hold at least that first and third position. Granadi has a comfortable gap here of point 
two of a second, but Binks has nothing to lose. He has to get an insane ending. Massa also clears that jump. Granadi is ahead. Binks is pushing, but Binks touches, and it is Massa overtaking. Map one goes to Berlin International Gaming. And once again, it all fell apart at the middle sector. 4G1, 13 to 10 for Big, and fist bumps all around on the side of the German camp, as you can briefly see from the player cameras there. That was, it was very, very promising with that first ace, but then G1 just decided to keep on clinging on, but then ultimately towards the end, we saw the lack of consistency from Friday once again, peeking above the yeah. player's shoulder, and then ultimately thwarting the plans of G1 to have a solid start to their game. Yeah, a bit of a shaky start. Like, they got the ace, but then it went a bit shaky for Big in some of the rounds, but they st were still able to get some points and rely on mistakes, again, from Gamers First. So they're winning their pick, and now we go to G-Force, a map that was also really good for Granadi. And um, I do think, yeah, I mean, Granadi has the world record on this one, but uh, we are also seeing a Granadi in the top 10 with three of his times. So great performance from him. Not sure about Massa, though, but I do think that, yeah, Big has the best average on this map. Um, being on first place, 0.2 ahead of Alliance, and um, have, on, have played this map 86 times. 86 times and having the best average, that is, a that pretty, is, a, that is very that solid. That is a testament to the consistency of the duo here on this map, and it's a really, really solid track record. We got all got to admit. In the meantime, map two underway. We're starting with round one now, following the perspective of Massa for the first few corners. Yeah, let's follow Massa here indeed, as uh, he gives us a very good overview, but also Granadi and Massa played this map six times and um, they have um, gotten, um, yeah, five wins on that. So um, with uh, that, of course, it, it's double the rounds because uh, with 86, then it's 43 rounds that have been played in total for them here on this maps, map in six rounds. So uh, there you go, Granadi, Binks, and Gwen are fighting it out. And Granadi oh, getting a good entry there, but Binks are oh, slowing down accordingly to get more inside in that corner. That's what he wants. That's how he can gain time. Gets a bit of air time. So Ganadi with a bit more speed. You're coming into the ending of the map. Ganadi with a very direct approach. Now the wheel comes into play. Look at that. Very good line. I think he tapped the brake there even to get around that corner a bit better. But that is a good ending here from Ganadi by the looks of it. But watch out for Binks. He's still in hot pursuit. Less than a tenth away. And already you can see the gap being widening down as a result of that slow entry into the first wall right on the side of Ganadi. But Binks cannot really continue to really take advantage of that particular mistake. And thus Ganadi will he be able to Ooh. continue into the lead? My goodness, Binks really gave it a red hot go, but unfortunately, 32,000 is what saw it was missing for the Frenchman to deny that draw for Big. Almost pulling a Muda there. Muda had insane endings on this map, but it's one to one. So let's go into round number two and see what is going on here. Binks and Gwen, good start. Granadi with a nose that he's really good at this, so that's why also Snow. It, like he comes from Un Trackmania United, where Snow was also a heavy part in, and uh, he was one of the best, if not even the best, Snow player in there, if we just exclude Sander, who still is ongoing and just super strong on that one. In the meantime, through Sector 1, we go at the split in Massa Granadi, Binks and Gwen. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Heading to the cruise control blocks and yourself up for that 90 left-hander before the bobsleigh 180 section. Let's follow from the perspective of Massa right now, giving us a good overview of the field. We see a lot of bobble and actually a clip on the side of Binks, it looks like. So we're already one player down for the G1 contingent. It will be Massa sandwiching uh, Granadi, uh, uh, Gwen in between himself and Granadi up until this very point where Gwen decides to take charge and move over into the lead of the race as we make our way through their identity now. Yeah, look at that. Massa with more speed, but let's see. Can Gwen hold on? This is a very important round. Gwen with a good approach, but it will be Granadi having more speed due to that lower line. Massa is also in the lead. Let's see. What can Granadi do? I think he drifted a little bit in that exit there. Oh, but this is so close. Gwen can snipe it. Gwen will deny the victory, setting a new PB with a 112.27. That is another draw here, but what a great ending, though. Massa losing a bit of time, but it's such a close map yet again. Yeah, and it's very, very hotly contested. Nip and tuck the way through with the positions being traded well basically almost checkpoint for checkpoint we always you know, we see uh, positions being traded even though there are a few slip-ups here and there we see plenty of uh, positions being traded at the time where players are still <laughs> regrouped within each other yeah. well past sector oh. one up until uh, this particular round Granadi managed to come away with it somehow manages to save it and keep it on the road but Pinks takes advantage of that to streak ahead by about a quarter of a second yeah that was he got away with that not getting penalized there and still finding himself in that battle for second place together with Pinks and his teammate Massa 
uh, Gwen and his teammate Marcel, of course, and Binks is long gone. He's 0.2 ahead, having a solid start here, but also Gwen is coming a bit closer. Now important to not wobble your car too much, and you can also release there, as you can see, Binks going super inside there to sling so slingshot himself into the lead. And look at that fight. Massa Granadi and Binks are fighting it out. Gwen also with a good line here, but it seems like Berlin International Gaming is in the lead first and second. It's down to Gwen to pick up the slack, but he's looking to be way too far back to make any kind of attack work for now. He needs to rely on those two wall rights here. The identity, Granadi, Massa, Gwen, one, two, three, and already Gwen going down to work, taking advantage of that slow speed from Massa at the exit to try and overhaul him for second place, trying to go for a bit of a lower jump at the line. It's not going to be enough for him to try and catch up in the lead, but at the very least, it's one point at the back for G1 as Granadi oh, will no. take the round Wait, win. Wait, he finished with that. No, he did not. He did not finish. Oh. He completely messed up. That was at the very edge. He just hit the pole side on. And ultimately, with that first and third place, it is going to be big coming home with the victory and thus taking the lead after three rounds played here on GeForce. Yeah, three rounds have been played uh, big now in the lead, but still like it looks control it looks like a more controlled big compared to yesterday because they are just able to get points in every round, which is what they need. They need to avoid getting aced. And with, that can happen of course against Gamers first. Bings had almost a very good run there, but it wasn't enough to at least deny the victory. And now Gwen off to an insane start. Massa also with good speed. It's again such a close start into this round. What a great match, but Bings the first one to crack. This time Bings uh, pulling the same kind of thing that Massa had in the first round where he went a little bit too far inside and clipped the very edge of the start of the uh, of the border of the road. But this time came out the better for it compared to Massa in the sense that he didn't have to pull off the full respawn after having crossed the beam to trigger the checkpoint. But Gwen in the meantime just in another world of his own. Up until this point, he was looking so, so promising up until he lost the grip midway through the dirt slide. And thus, it will be promoting Granari and Massa up into first and second position. Two seconds. And two seconds of a gap. They have quite the advantage to manage. They can afford even to go for the safe end if they wish to. Yep. As we make our way through the first of the two wall rides there. We go a little bit on the slow side for Massa, but that's okay. As long as we make it across the finish line, that's all that matters. Granari still ahead by about two tenths of a second. 102.4 at the split. What's the time going to be? Looking to be a bit slow at the final wall it right. It doesn't he, matter. It doesn't matter. 112.568. Just wanted to give a bit of a reference, of course, in terms of the time yep. we were expecting. But still, those critical mistakes from G1 and uh, are going to be putting Gwynx and Gwen in a little bit of a spot of bother. Definitely, that is the case. So 7-3, to three, Big playing the format really well. And Binx and Gwen, well, I mean, they really wanted to avoid that ace there um, or that is being scored against them. And I mean, Gwen was ahead uh, just before that dirt suit, but unfortunately messed it up. And let's go to maybe the last round. Big could extend their lead to two points if they get the ace in this round. And it looks very promising. Gwen gets the weakest start from all of them. But goes, comes back with a nice no side there, actually. That was uh, kind of well, but now airtime in that cruise control section. Doesn't lose him too much, but still is not able to come back with that. And now Bings has to deny Massa and Granadi the ace. Good line there from all of the players, but Massa, oh. his car was wobbling a bit too much. And with that, he had to respawn, but still his teammate Granadi is there to win that round, maybe. Yeah, unfortunately exited with a little bit of airtime from the slope of the bump slide as he transitioned back to dirt. Oh, so that's going to be no leaving speed. Granadi high and dry indeed, losing a lot of speed. And now he's under threat from Gwen for that second position, that vital second position to at least prevent G1 from getting an ace. But now that position is being given back courtesy of Gwen's appalling entry into the wall ride. Oh. And now Granati trying to go for broke, trying to catch up with Banks to go for the lead of the race. Is it going to be enough through the final it one? Is. Go. is it going to be enough? The answer is a yes for 17 thousandths of a second. What an ending from the wheel man. And with Massa up to third, Gwen's mistake was even more damaging than we first thought at first glance. And thus, Big only need one second place finish individually to back their second consecutive map. Those small things make a tremendous difference. That Massa stayed ahead there and also Granadi with a 17,000th of a sna second sniping it there in the ending. The momentum is on big side and they have the track point here. They only need one more point to go to map number three, which will be Cosmos. All right, let's go into the round because Massa gets a really good start. Gwen is also in there and also Bings with a good start. No one losing a tremendous amount of speed. 
big only need over second place to win this map. Indeed, now it's all down to G1 to get down the work and uh, try to make the dream happen for themselves. They try have to try to make their own luck. Ace or bust right from this point on. Two back-to-back -back aces to flip the gap from a five-point deficit to a one-point lead. But right now, the outcome is not looking that good. It's looking uh, rather grim thanks to uh, Gwen's slight mishap at the uh, dirt zoop through there. As we go on to the identity right now, it's Massa and Granadi with a solid option. Granadi and Massa are so far ahead and also Massa's on a really good time, by the way. Point 20 checkpoint is not too bad as Granadi capitalized from the slowdown from Binks and this is it. Massa's gonna end it with a bang here. What times are they setting? This will be big winning map number two as well. Massa not with a fast standing, but still with a 112.014. A new match PB and another ace to win this map. Big two G1 Zero. Already a really, really great start, a beginning of an answer being given by Big compared to what they had on Friday. Two back-to-back -back map wins, even though the first one was a little bit more rocky in terms of how it actually came together. But this second one really set the clocks back to where they should be. And now they're looking very, very lethal indeed as we make our way into our next one, which will be Cosmos. That is what they were in need of, this momentum, just finding their way into the match as well as split headed But unfortunately, they lost it by a hair. I'm still a bit gutted because Epos and Razi played really well. Like, Razi definitely redeemed himself and played a very good match. And uh, I just uh, love to see that uh, in this way. And uh, I do think that they have a bright future ahead of them if they just continue to play like that. Yeah, I do believe so as well. Actually, post-match, I went over to Razi, who was still looking quite a bit dejected yeah. after the match that just happened. And I just decided to give him a little bit of a hug because he really, really deserves that in those times where he knows where he could have done so much more. But he felt like there was maybe no more left to give at that stage of the race as we're making our way already through this best of seven series with map three underway and already a crash from Massa. Already a crash from Massa, but also to that again, you get top eight in the world championship. Like that is an insane achievement in Trackmania. So huge shout out to Epos and Razi. Very good performance and you can be really proud of yourselves. All right, but let's see. It is uh, Massa with a mistake one second behind, but also look at that. We see um, actually close fight between uh, all the players here, between Gwen, Binks and Granadi in the top three. Only Massa a little bit further behind, but he can capitalize from a mistake. We have seen a lot of mistakes on this map here. Binks in the lead, so gamers first could capitalize from their second pick here on that first round. Currently, Binks leading by about a tenth and a half away from Granadi. Can Granadi try to find an answer back to Binks' strong start to this round in a strong middle sector as well that allowed him to seize the lead away from Binks' hands. And now it's going to be Gwen trying to have a little bit of a slice of the pie as well, trying to move up into P2 ahead of Granadi. 103.235 at the last play before the identity right there. And Granadi still under threat from the youngster Lee. from oh, no. G1. And that's a very, very slight touch at the very end of the last quarter with that little grazing of the left front from the grandstand still stayed ahead and it's still going to be uh staying ahead apparently <laughs> yeah it was have. one hundredth of a second oh man so well i i actually closed my eyes because i was like oh no but it is big <laughs> getting that second place in there uh, i have to watch the replay after that what just happened uh, Oh, okay, uh, a small hiccup there, but I think everything is now fine as uh, Bings is on first still, Massa on second, and uh, Gwen uh, getting overtaken uh, by Massa. There. Okay, the positions have completely swapped around. That was a complete wrong call for me, but let's go into the round. Yeah, let's go into the round. Currently uh, having a little bit of a rift again, separating the top two and the bottom two, and the fairly even split of the teammates. Right now we see Granadi going at it versus Banks for the benefit of the lead. In the meantime, Massa continuing to do battle with Gwen for third, trying to keep on that place to see if they can still maintain the status quo at the very least, or if Granadi manages to go ahead of Banks for the lead of the race, then trying to even even the scales a little bit with the victory as we head into Sector 3. Yeah, let's head into Sector 3 and see what Binks can do. Can he hold uh, the lead against Granadi, who had a really good ending, but unfortunately maybe overcooked it a bit, but still was on that second place in that round as Granadi gets a good entry there. Massa also behind Binks versus Granadi. This is so close, neck and neck, and Granadi will overtake here. 13 thousandths of a second, and we have a 3-3 three three scoreline. Big playing really well also on this map. All we have to say is good round because that was one of the finishes of all time, if I do say so myself, but in a good way. That is to say, a really, really close race all the way through that final sequence of corners. What a real, it's, it's a real treat to see these cars dance around the track from the top down perspective, giving it all they can to see who can cross the beam first. Yeah, that was such a nice ending here from Granadi. 
I mean, Binks also looks really strong on this map, and I mean, I don't have to mention Gwen, who has the world record, but it is 3-3. Three to three. This will be all decided in the next couple of rounds. No team is majorly leading, both getting a victory out of those rounds, but it looks to be an ace in this round for Berlin International Gaming. Gwen is already half a second behind Massa and Granati. That top-down part at the start of Sector 2 is really doing themselves in right now, and Gwen doesn't really have an option, uh, any other option but to kind of like tank a little bit and pray for a mistake from the red side to come through to allow him to get at least one point home for G1 in this round. But right now, Massa and Granati are not showing any kind of opportunity left. They have closed all doors shut. They are trying to lock them down as soon as possible as soon as they reach the checkered flag here on this round. Through the identity we go with Granati leading Massa by about a tenth of a second through the first corner on the left-hand side, then through the right-hander. And already we see Gwen on the assault versus Massa. Massa holding on up until the end with 14 thousandths of a second and already the grunt of satisfaction from Massa managing to hold off the hard-charging Frenchman to continue extending the lead from big. Very good identities from Massa and Granati in the last couple of rounds, securing them a lot of points. Six points, more than halfway through on Gamer's first, second pick. And if this map, I mean, we're definitely going to go to backflip, which will be map number four, so keep that in mind. And again here, Massa with a great start, Granati with a crash, and it is Bings also not too far ahead here. So again, like, how well can they play the format? Gwen and Bing should just not crash and they get two points. They come a bit closer, but they also should consider that they cannot both fully make mistakes because Big would be then up to seven points. Whatever solution they might have tried to, uh, to find over the course of the past 24 hours is simply not working as, uh, yeah, once again we see one team member at the very head of the field, at the very top, battling it out for the overall lead. In the meantime, one of the other teammates, unfortunately, kind of down in the doldrums, not really in a position to make any kind of impact and not capable to get dig uh, themselves out of that hole that they created for themselves as Gwen is continuing to fight very, very hard for oh, the no. Masa, That's a very unfortunate clip for the Scandinavian like trying to go too far on, and thus that will be promoting Massa up into the lead to try and enforce a draw here through this round. Through that identity, we go through the last right-hander. Gwen and Binks will finish almost in formation, but that is such a wasted opportunity for G1, and that will send Big onto map point number three. Yeah, track point it is there for Billion International Gaming. 4-7, Gamers first could have gotten one more point in this round, but again, Gwen overcooked there. He went too tight there around that corner, clipped a little bit, and that just seems to be the formula. And in general, this pick didn't really work out that well so far for Gamers First. Also yesterday, it shows like Marcel Granati putting on their A game today. They're playing really good, and it's 2-0, and it could be 3-0 so far, as we have a small hiccup here, but every player survives that, as it is only on our screen, as Massa finds himself in the lead again. Massa playing really well in the last rounds, whereas Granati, for example, was really solid on edge. Yeah, everybody trying to kind of... Uh, Massa and Granati basically working on each other's weaknesses and strengths. It's symbiosis, yeah, yeah. a really, really symbiotic, uh, symbiotic relationship and uh, sort of way of thinking and way of playing the game right now, as Massa has finally Find himself a little bit on the back foot, allowing Gwen to move up into the lead, but also finding himself right within contention within the top three with Gwen Binks Massa separated by less than a tenth of a second. Granati taking a little bit of a step back, about a second down, heading into the final few corners of the lap around this Scandi Flick 180. Massa keeping it all the oh. way to the inside. Gwen looking very, very racy. Binks as well. This could be very, very close to try and get the counter ace needed for G1. Binks still going toe to toe with Massa. Can he hold on for dear life? Massa still in second place all the way he to can. the end. Four thousandths of a second. Massa did not. What a round. Ace. That is a very, very important outcome for Big there. What a great round there from Massa, but also Gwen with an insane time, only being 0.2 away from his world record. But most importantly, Massa denying the ace for Binks and Gwen for them to come back into this match or into the map. And well, this is just great to see that Massa is putting on his A game. It's six to eight. Massa now with a mistake will not get that gear, and it is Ganadi who has to get himself at least one point in this round. That was a little bit of an unfortunate touch to the inside apex of that uh, no-engine uh, 180 left-hander there, that hairpin just before the drop down into the plastic, heading into the top-down perspective, marking the start of Sector 2. And now it's going to be Binks coming away the better here from this particular section, coming away with the lead about a tenth ahead of Gwen, making our way through this no-engine section again, through with Granati from the perspective of Weaman himself, currently still chasing down the G1 duo, just trailing him by a tenth of a second, waiting for his opportunity to strike. That looks very 
very, very close to disaster there on the side of the top three. And Kanadi continues to see the duo streak away. Can he fight back on sector three? Can he fight back? Bings and Gwen looking absolutely great in this round. Only tearing apart. Tearing apart by three thousandths of a second. Make it even twenty-seven thousandths in this sector here. But Kanadi's coming back. Kanadi with a very good line. Gwen and Bings are not safe here from Kanadi. Gwen with a mistake. Kanadi will definitely get second place. Gwen on third. Massa on fourth. But still a very important point. And another ace being denied for gamers first here. Big still in the lead and they only need one point. A draw in this way to win this map. Indeed, but uh, yeah, G1 now need to really, really put the power down when they need to, but they also need to know when to back off, know when not to try to push too hard, because this is really where their downfall is going to be ultimately. If this kind of uh, showing that we've had so far keeps happening, right now they have a good chance to redeem themselves, Ooh. even though Big came back really, really thick and fast at them, but Pink's going a little bit too high, getting airtime, and thus dropping back down to P3 as we head into the second sector with the first top-down view. If the position stays as is, we would go into overtime because Gwen and Binks would secure two points, but Binks with a mistake. And can Masa and Kanadi just save it now? They are second and third. That's all that they are in need of. And also Gwen is on a great time, but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter if Masa and Kanadi are getting second and third. Yeah, it just doesn't matter at this point. Everybody just driving single file, and the gaps have been widened quite significantly here with Gwen four tenths ahead of Masa himself, three tenths ahead of his teammate Kanadi himself, six tenths ahead of Binks going Going through the last few sectors of map through the identity we go with Gwen leading with a 103.172. Four tenths clear of Masai in second place. Bing's Both going together. Bing's crashed indeed, as you pointed out. It's and it will over. be Gwen winning. It's over. It will be a 10 9 scoreline with a 112.952 courtesy of Gwen. An astounding time from the Frenchman, but ultimately it is not enough to stem the tide. And it will be 3 nil and three Jokers to be potentially utilized for Big to actually get the win here. Wow, what a close map that was, though. But just they were always just in control. But international gaming looking really strong. And now we go to backflip. If someone could do the new line, it is the likes of uh, Gwen, of course. But I think that's too early to call because it's big second pick. And uh, I really look forward to see that because they played that map yesterday against uh, Alliance Big, and it did not really work out in their favor. It didn't exactly work out in their favor as well, although it was a really, really closely contested map, if I recall correctly, where it went uh, very, very tight. As we do have a tactical timeout being called up on, I'm uh, assuming by uh, uh, the G1 team trying to figure out maybe some solutions and also Big taking advantage of that to also maybe do a little bit of a recap of how the game has gone so far and just to see uh, whether, uh, whether we have a change of plan with that uh, kind of buffer that we have built up or if we just stick to the same game plan, I'm pretty sure that the ladder will be in effect as we now get a little bit of a gander once again at backflip which could be our final map for today yeah the average speaks for big on this map being first within the average 108.827 uh, by playing uh, 48 individual rounds so 24 rounds being played on this map and having a 50 percent win rate on that map so consistency works out but maybe not the pace in terms of just having the fastest times because Kanadi has a 106.928 as a PB, as we've seen the faster times already. And uh, let's see this new line being utilized by Granadi and Binks that was found during the middle stage event and uh, being used there, where we had a match between Big and ITB. But right now, Granadi's in the lead. Massa with a small mistake. Binks and Gwen are behind Granadi, who has to deny some valuable points towards the. Uh, Players. Sector 1 done and dusted, and yeah, Masa not having managed to execute the line as he intended to through the start as we get a very, very bad backflip landing and a huge bounce on the side of Binks, allowing Masa to move up into third place to make the situation a little bit more bearable for Big at the present time, and Gwen is going to be getting reeled in really, really fast. We see a lot of airtime on the side of Masa, maybe even more compared to Gwen at this reactor boost part as we make our way through to the Identity Knights. It's Gennady still holding the lead, but by a meager tenth of a second, it's still all to play for here oh, in this Identity, this so good. and it is so good on the side of Masa Gwen had a very, very high, very slow backflip there as we see Granadi having the double touch here at the final ramp. Masa takes over the lead and wins with a 0.525. Granadi second, and we start off strong with Big. 3 0. 3 0 for Big, and that is the consistency that I was just referring to here. Very good performance from Big. They lost yesterday against Alliance, who are the second 
cons more, more consistent team on this map, or second most consistent team on this map, as we see Binks and Gwen going for the wall bang there. Oh, and Granadi tried to do it with too much finesse and will not make it there. But we can also see Binks not with the best start. A very, very hectic round uh, to start off things, or a hectic start into the round. Very, very hectic start. Unfortunately, that little touch of the baller with the left read is what compromised uh, Granadi's uh, start section effectively. And with the low amount of speed that he had, he almost did not make it past the ramp, which is basically an insta respawn loop, essentially, yep. that will basically send you out of contention. So Granadi's still in on track, albeit 2.7 seconds down compared to the leader, Gwen, who's basically just checked out ahead. He is just completely gone into the distance, even from the perspective of Masa, who's six tenths down. He can still see the car, but he continues to see it just grow smaller and smaller on the perspective of his screen as we go through the identity right now with Masa's perspective. Gwen, a bit further up ahead. Oh, Let's see if he gets oh. the proper line. No, he does not get the proper trajectory. The power Balaka sends him way too far down, way too early, thus promoting Masa into the lead. And Granani promoted up to third, and it's big salvage that victory from that mistake from Gwen. And again, G1 looking a lot of the worst for wear, and it looks as though the riding is starting to become more and more visible on the wall there. Yeah, so it seems like everything that didn't work out for Big yesterday is just working out today. And on all picks from their opponents as well, it could be a 4-0 here, as all the other matches have been so close. And Big looking completely different than yesterday and are definitely a threat that we have to take a look on tomorrow as well, because they will play against uh, Solari tomorrow. Yeah, indeed. Unfortunately for Granari, that uh, start execution was uh, not the way he would have hoped for and uh, ends up losing a lot of time. Four seconds down compared to the leading uh, driver, that being Binks, from G1. Gwen following in close pursuit in second position, and uh, they have just relegated the nearest big member second down compared to the leader as we make our way through Sector 2 now with the first backflip. Yeah, the first backflip comes into play. Binks and Gwen clearing it nicely. They need to get that ace to come back into this match, else the momentum will be gone again. Same as on, I think that was on G-Force or Cost, no, on G-Force or Edge, where they also had that opportunity, but also yesterday, of course, in their match as well against KC. So let's see, can they survive it? It's their round to lose, and Binks with a respawn. This is so unfortunate. Massa, not with the best amount of speed, but he doesn't need it. He just has to survive. Binks with another respawn, so that is also another respawn for Granati. But still, it's one point secured for Big. Binks surviving it now, so that will be a victory for Gamers First Day. They're coming closer, but still, it's not an ace for them. It is only a victory. Only a victory, and uh, in that particular round, they look so promising, and it's... Uh, and look at Binks B as well. Yeah, Binks, uh, yeah, 11 seconds down, and uh, yeah, that is, a, that is a classic case of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory here to kind of flip the roles for G1, and as they were looking to have that round under lock and key, under control from the start, courtesy of those uh, Little slip-ups at the uh, start ice slide there on the side of Big, but ultimately it all fell apart at the very, very end as Granadi decides to skip around the reactor boost point, which is going to be penalizing him greatly through that uh, double-banked right-hander before the slalom, and it's going to be his teammate Massa's role to pick up the slack in the lead of the race. Yeah, Massa just has to hold on, but even a second place would be still completely fine for them, so Massa just has to stick to the plan. And maybe another mistake will happen here from uh, G1 side, and Granadi could promote up into third position. Just be in close proximity towards the opponents, and it is uh, Massa and Binks having a great fight right now between themselves, as Binks has no airtime. And you can see, no airtime is a bit advantageous, but you also do not lose too much if you get a bit of that. And Binks leading the round. He can redeem himself. Binks, however, with a respawn. Massa in the lead. Granadi can overtake, and he will do so. Gwen is also in there. That is a great fight, though for that second position right now, but also Binks with another respawn, and also Gwen is finishing here on third place, Granadi uh, on second place, Granadi is on third, and Binks on last, completely falling apart here, as we would say in Trickmania, and he is in the mud. And that is twice on the trot, at the very same wall. And look, look at the reaction, earlier. look at the yeah, reaction. He's, ju he's just completely dejected, and we can only be, uh, we can only commiserate with them as uh, they are finding themselves with a really, really big ask and a huge mountain to try and climb back up as they find themselves four points behind big who are on match points and day three points
day three point for Big after a disappointing first match against a very strong looking alliance. They can now redeem themselves and show or also assert a lot of dominance for their opponent tomorrow. I think we're going to have banger matches coming up tomorrow if Big continues to play like that. Not the fastest times, but super consistent and definitely something that we have to look out for. It is Biggs and Gwen Arbor who can deny the victory for Big that they're in need of, but Granati with a great flip here. Look at that. He comes closer. Mas is in the lead by 0.3 of a second. Is this it already, Tom? Here comes the wheelman himself. Can he try to uh, get himself in a really, really good position? And already at the speed check, he makes the work done. Oh, He's Binks. going toe to toe with Gwen for third place. Binks also having a little bit of airtime as well. Moving through to the identity right now with Massa, Binks, Gwen, and Granati in that order. Can Granati try to snatch the all important third place? Yeah. Needed for Big. Right now, it's going to be super close. Binks going to be a little bit slower. Gwen sniping Massa for the lead. Granati and Massa are going to have to do with a draw for this one, one tenth down, what an ending from Gwen to extract one more round. But still, one point secured for Big. It is five to nine. Gamers first in need of an ace, and then they at least need a victory in the next round. And it's looking very hard against the most consistent team on this map. As Granadi and Massa get the start out, but also Binks and Gwen with a very good starting section. This is do or die for Gamers First. This is do or die for Gamers First indeed, as they find themselves again with that four point deficit to the climb. As you alluded to, at least an ace is required to try at least salvage any kind of hope to try and uh, get that map on the books to go on to, at the very least, a theoretical game five. But right now, at the end of the first checkpoint, it's going to be Massa, Granadi first and second up until this point, where we had a little bit of a clip there as we go through second. Sector 2, Massa, Binks, Gwen. Can Binks and Gwen try to overhaul the German? Can they defeat Mr. Dennis Lotze to actually get themselves on the board? Massa in the lead. It is his round to lose. He only needs a second place. Gwen not with a good transition, but he can get a, get a good ending. Yet follow Gwen here for the last identity, maybe, if Binks and Gwen cannot find an ace here. Massa with a good flip. Massa has a lot of speed, and Massa and Granadi will advance into day three. Dominant performance 4 0 in favor for Berlin International Game. Gaming. They're taking it. What a great performance. It is 10 to 6. And there you go. Big is through into day number three. There you go. The joy starts to explode a little bit. The emotions start to flow out. There you are. This is the sign of a job well done for Big. 4 0. A match result that tends to go against the grain from what we've seen so far in the entirety of the day. Yeah. What a performance and what a turnaround with Fortune in the past 24 hours. In the same way, in a sense, as the opening super weekend of stage one of the track. Uh, Trackmania Grand League as well, where they bounced back from a 4-0 loss versus Solary. Yeah, so that was quite something. So Berlin International Gaming will be playing against Solary tomorrow. We have seen that already. The comeback on control. Maybe that is still in your mind, guys. That was insane for just getting that entry into the final. So we're going to see a rematch tomorrow. Massa and Granadi redeeming themselves. And also, shout out to Kevin Amaterasu. Probably also, yeah, I know that, did a very good job in the coaching zone. Yeah, and I think we can only uh, can only commiserate also with G1, who are looking to deliver so much more promising results. But uh, yeah, you could see on the play uh, on the faces of the players and even on the coach Alpha Dream that it's just went south really quickly. They just yeah. never got out of that particular uh, spot of bother that they were in. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's an early exit for them as we have the full round down of the group stage bracket with all matches completed. So. For Into the Breach, Seed 1, Solary Seed 2 split, being uh, committed to Seed 4, while Seed 3 then in Group A. And in Group B, it will be Seed 1 for Alliance, Seed 2 for Carmine Corp, and Seed 3 for Big. Yeah, and then fourth seed, unfortunately, being Gamers First, who are eliminated all of this tournament. But guys, before we jump into the matches for tomorrow, huge shout out to our sponsors again, AMD. Then we also have Carperwell and, of course, Alienware, who are also hosting a giveaway on their Twitter. But without your contribution, this event would have not possible in this grand scheme of things. So thank you very much, and let's jump into the matches that are happening tomorrow, because we have five matches yeah, that are happening. Indeed. Quick rundown of the matches, as you can see them on the screen. So 2 p.m. CET, a very early start to the day with Solary versus Big for the first quarterfinal. Then on the second quarterfinal, we will have the Carmine Corp versus well. Brandon Otak versus Stufsen with you. This is going to be pretty interesting to watch as well. Yeah. Then semi-final one and two will be facing off, of course, the winners of quarterfinal one and two. And then the grand finale at 8 p.m. CET, the last two teams to decide who will be the 2023 Track Media World Champions. Yeah, will it be Pack and Carl Jr. again, who have already won the World Championship at a total of six times, or will we crown a new World Champion? Solary has been beaten today, so that's why they have to play the first match tomorrow against Berlin International Gaming. I'm really looking forward to that. 
Guys, thank you very much for watching our cast and huge shout out to the production as well. It has been a blast. It was awesome so far and we have five more matches tomorrow and this was just like what a if, nice day if you thought we had uh, we needed a breather beforehand well we're gonna need a lot more breathers tomorrow <laughs> yeah. in case those uh, this kind of action continues we hope it continues that way for ourselves and for you guys who are watching thank you very much for tuning in to day two of the track media world championship for 2023 i've been thomas mengozi aka g geek this has been locker servo aka kylo fish much love be kind stay safe and see you tomorrow godspeed people